I wanted to quickly mention that one of my neighbors here on my street where I live here in Austin um, is uh, helping out a mother from Ukraine who's able to escape from Ukraine with her son. And she is here with no means of support. Um, her husband is fighting in the war back in Ukraine. And um, I've put a link in the description of this video to a GoFundMe. And if you guys can help her out in any way you can, that would be wonderful. Uh, just um, thank you very much for checking that out. So back to the video. So in this video, I want to talk about what makes oil painting so different. And I'm going to jump right into it. And I want to start off by showing you this uh, white vase and then showing you it sort of half painted or just I started to put in the bottom and I'm doing this digitally just to uh, illustrate the illusion. But if you look at this, it looks far too dark and it looks far too brown or too orange, but actually it's perfect. And if I put in the rest of the, um, the background around it and, and the rest of the white vase, and just kind of jump back and forth between these two, believe me, I'm not changing anything. And you can go and pause the video and go sample it in Photoshop or whatever you want. But this is exactly um, the co correct bottom half of the vase, sort of half painted. Now, that's what makes uh, painting so difficult, is all these optical illusions. And I've talked about these illusions before. I mean, you can take a simple colored dot, and that same colored dot over here on the shadow side looks very different than it does over on the light side and yet you can see it's exactly the same color so that optical illusion is always in play so as you start to paint anything whether it's a white vase or a face or whatever it's going to look completely wrong to you just like it does here in the, in, in the white vase that's, that's just started in fact it's not going to look um, right to you in terms of the values and comparing your colors and everything else until you get the canvas uh, completely covered with paint so, how do you avoid these optical illusions? Well, the way that I do it in my teaching, if you've seen any of my other videos, I'm always talking about color checking. Um, I actually sell a color checker. You can make one yourself, and this is for working from life if you're using this. But if you were working off of a laminated photograph or just a glossy photograph with, with a protective covering on it, you can just put your paint right on the uh, laminated photograph and, and check your colors that way. So, without going into a lot of detail about my method, and you can go check it out on drawmixpaint.com and look at these three highlighted videos, and that's my entire uh, method workflow, just the real base layer, trying to understand how to mix colors and how to paint. Now, when you're doing my method, we've got the first workflow, which is penciling. The second one is color mixing. The third one is what I call covering the canvas with paint. And covering the canvas with paint is not the last workflow. The last workflow is fix it. Or now that you've covered the canvas with paint, you go in and you make your adjustments and you make your fixes and bump things around, do a little bit of blending or whatever to get it to that final uh, finished painting. But in the third workflow, which is cover the canvas with paint, you're really not supposed to be judging. In fact, when I, in my private class that I teach here in Austin, when I have students here, um, and, and I'm teaching, I always uh, absolutely make the point that they're going to divide the third workflow from the fourth workflow. And so what that means is, is in the third workflow, you're doing a lot of color checking, you're checking every stroke, and you're sort of blindly putting those colors where they go. And I make the point over and over in my videos, but I say, it's going to look wrong to you. But never mind, you keep uh, doing your color checker, just keep filling it in, and then once the canvas is filled in and you've got all the, the bits of, of color from the shadow all the way to the highlight, once that canvas is covered with paint, it's very easy to see where there's uh, problems. So in other words, the whole, you know, let's go back to this whole, the core of this video that I'm trying to teach you is that in the beginning when you're laying those colors in, you're using your color checking, you're either checking on a laminated photo or you're using a color checker, um, but you're trusting the color checking. And, and this is a teaching method that I'm talking about. This isn't the way you would paint for the rest of your life, but as a teaching method in checking your colors, you lay in those colors, and even if it looks wrong, you just keep going. In fact, I have a rule that says if the canvas is covered with paint, you move on. So in other words, you're not going to judge it now. You're going to get the canvas covered with paint, and then once the canvas is completely covered, you can go in and make all the adjustments you want to. But I always tell my students, leave it alone until the canvas is completely covered with paint, at least for that object and a little bit of background around it. So I hope that video, th this video is helpful to you. 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.